I was 15, my dad took me, he took me to see like four Broadway musicals and it's just like we saw a different show every night and it made me see my dream. We are going to do a full day of photographic artistic excellence. We are meeting with Playbill and today I'm doing their dream role feature which means that I have given them a list of roles that I would love to play, that I've always wanted to play. They are costuming me from uh, an archive of, of beautiful, historic Broadway costume pieces. I want authenticity. I want this, I want to get really hairy today. We're dressing up and taking photos. R Rosé is just a costume. Rosé is just a, it's a, just a, another character. And now I see, I look, I, I look at the joy I have being in Titanic and the success that Rosé has. And I'm like, I have to bridge these two in a way that I don't think has existed before. So I'm like, what's fabulous about what we're doing today is that, uh, you know, there's, there, it shows that there is no limit to how things can be cast and how things can be portrayed and played. It's really nice to kind of imagine myself in these, roles that I always thought I would play. To be completely honest, most of these roles are like childhood dreams. One of my favorite ones that we're going to do is both the female and male lead roles in one of my all-time favorite musicals, Andrew Lippa's The Wild Party. And today I'm going to be Queenie, and I'm also going to be Burns. Oh, my, we're doing the MC in Cabaret. I discovered Cabaret when I, I think, like, well, not, I like knew what it was, but I think I really discovered it when I was in college. And I was a fan of Alan Cumming and I was aware of him because he's a Scottish national treasure. I think I kind of looked at what Alan was doing and kind of saw some of it for myself. This is, this character is so, so very me. At the core of my career, I am an MC and I understand the pressure and the struggle of, regardless of what is going on in my life, I have to I have to show up and get on stage and like lead people very often. One of my dream roles forever is Velma Kelly. Velma Velma Kelly, I I have so much in common with Velma Kelly. Number one, she's killed somebody. She's like the fucking go-to talented bitch. She's like, she loves to be in the newspaper. She, and she's absolutely ferocious. She never gives up. And the most important thing to her is getting, is, is being in this fucking center of the stage. That's so unhealthy, but like, I totally get it. <laughs> We're doing Miss Hannigan from the musical Annie. This is what she chose to war. What does it mean to you? Look at me. <laughs> I, I, if I ever were to play Miss Hannigan, it would be hilarious because I understand what it's like to be a fucking crazy alcoholic bitch. Like she's like in every, you know, she's that kind of character who like in every scene has a flask, like hidden or not hidden somewhere. I think it's so funny that she's respond. she hates children, but she's responsible for so many of them. Norma Desmond. I'm ready for what? <laughs> Norma Desmond is the lead role in Sunset Boulevard. I don't know, I've always been obsessed with fucking batty old bitches, so I would love to one day to play Norma Desmond. Which that costume, honestly, like, can't wait to put on because it's literally like a fucking caftan and like sunglasses. Norma is a huge inspiration to me because she never stops dreaming. Oh, she's literally incredible. I did the show in college and fell in love with it. It's a great story of a, of a woman who is mad. <laughs> We're also gonna do 
my all-time favorite musical is Hair. And I'm going to do Burger, George Burger in Hair. Um, Burger is like the leader. The leader of the pack. The father of the hippie movement. When I really became aware of Hair when I was in college, and the score especially, the music, ignited something in me. And when I saw the revival on Broadway, and when the Actors Benefit Fund recording came out, that, that recording expanded my mind as to how wildly, vastly things can be cast. I, I, I said, I have to be in this musical, who would I be? And I saw Burger when I was younger, and I was like, okay, I cannot play this until I'm probably in my 30s. But now that I'm in my 30s, <laughs> and a stoner, <laughs> I, I, I think I could do a really good job with, with Burger. Well, it's so funny that I've become a drag yeah. queen and all of the drag yeah. roles that I sought were alcoholics yeah, and party animals, which is a part of my past. Yeah. And yet here I am going to my number one dream role, which is just a man with long brown hair who smokes a lot of weed. And that's who I'm becoming today. So. <laughs> <laughs> King George, I just think, would low-key be really fucking fun. It's, it's basically an ad. I want to fucking play King George in Hamilton, and I actually I would love to do it on Broadway. So this is just pushing, this is just me forcing them to see me for it. <laughs> We're doing Joseph, which my family's gonna go crazy over, because they are losers who are obsessed with Donny Osmond and Joseph. <laughs> My parents are gonna freak out when they see this. That show changed my life. It was the first leading role I ever played in the musical. I was 16 in high school. And I remember when I was Joseph, it was, it was so empowering because I look at that, that role and I see, I see so much joy in it. I understand the joy. But when I put that coat on and started spinning in those photos, it's like I, it's like I keep, something in my spirit came alive. And that's what Joseph is. Joseph is hope. Joseph is joy. Joseph is bravery. It's survival. I knew I would always, I always knew I would come back to theater. It's in everything I do. Getting the opportunity to put on these clothes and to just even sit down and be asked, who do you want to play? Who do you want to, to be? Who would you like to play? And to know that there is no limit based on gender. This is just, a, this is just an article. These are just photos, but like, I mean, I, all, every single one of them I can see. 